I'm Peter Sweetman. I'm a Cambridge trained engineer. I worked for 10 years at JP Morgan. I was a social entrepreneur for four years and then for the last seven, I've been working in climate change and energy efficiency finance. I bring this message to you to underline the need for adopting an ambitious energy efficiency directive, providing powerful incentives for building refurbishment. We all agree that energy efficiency will be a cornerstone of the future energy model that we are now designing and that buildings must be an important part of that. Nevertheless, within the current international economic and debt crisis, many of you have doubts about the financial feasibility of a substantial program for building retrofits. In this video, I'm going to prove to you that the moment is right and that the EU must act now. With a background in finance, it comes as a surprise to me to see money being left on the table in the, in the guise of energy efficiency. When I look at our existing building stock in Europe, I see an opportunity for us to wisely invest to create local jobs and to stimulate our economies and at the same time to make sensible national savings. Europe's the largest energy importer in the world and 40% of our energy is consumed in buildings. The majority of the energy is used in heating the space or cooling the space around us. And by improvements to the building's envelope, we can now have buildings that consume 80% less energy than was previously the case. There are around 200 million buildings standing today in Europe and 160 million of those will still be standing and in use by 2050. Deep renovation can save over 75% of the energy requirements of those buildings. There are two levels of benefits to deep renovation. Firstly, at an individual level, you're making a financial investment in reduced payments to energy in the future. At a national level, this is stimulative to the macroeconomic economy. The Commission believes that 100 billion euros in fuel costs can be saved every year through energy efficiency, together with the creation of 2 million local jobs. Investing in renovations nearly always makes financial sense because you're investing in future savings. It's not like buying a car which is a depreciating asset. When you've made the investment, that's when the savings start. So, the person who pays for it is the person who can perceive the benefits. And so that's either the occupant who's paying lower energy bills, or it's the government who's getting the benefits of having activity and recovering taxes, which was illustrated very well by the Julian report in Germany, where the government received more than it had invested. So the first thing is the public sector can lead by example by having a binding commitment to refurbish 3% of their building stock every year. Secondly, key act actors in the private sector need to be encouraged to participate. Thirdly, access to low-cost finance is important to make sure that those homeowners and small businesses have access to the capital required. And finally, sharing best practice at a European level in policy making is going to be key. So finance is an important integral component because it is all about the numbers. It's not sexy to buy a retrofit, certainly not as sexy as buying a car, but the numbers have to work. So we need to have cheap money to make the numbers work. And getting the finance right is the first step in the provision of the full solution. Banks need to serve their clients. Because they have access to low-cost capital and capital is required by the building's occupants, those banks can distribute that capital to the end customers. And the governments, of course, as in the case of Germany and the UK, can then stand behind the banks and allow the banks to have access to certain pools of low-cost capital that make sense from the national interest. So in Germany, KfW, working with private sector banks, has been able to provide low-cost capital at roughly 2.75% in an amount of approximately 27 billion euros over four years to renovate over a million homes. That's been successful because it's also levered an additional 27 billion, totaling 54, of total retrofit and refurbishment spend. The UK Green Deal is innovative because it attaches the repayments for energy efficiency retrofits into the energy accounts. Those repayments are attached to the building, solving the problem of whether the tenant leaves or the building is sold, 
and it generates a financial track record for the payments themselves because people are less likely to stop paying their energy bills than unsecured loans. In 2012, Europe has the opportunity to pass an ambitious directive which sets a priority for energy efficiency, which enables us to take sensible economic choices about energy savings. It creates jobs and it establishes a precedent for a resource efficient Europe. So within the directive, member states need to submit a national energy efficiency action plan, which will outline how they intend to meet their targets. And together with that, I believe there should be a financing plan that points to the resources that are available to meet them. Europe is the world's largest energy importer. It imports 80% of its oil and 60% of its gas from third countries. The question is, can we afford not to save 100 billion euros a year?